Our concluding work on the program is Brahms' Ein Deutsches Requiem, a German Requiem. The word Requiem comes to us mainly from the Roman Catholic liturgy or Mass for the Dead. The word Requiem Eternum Dona Eis Domine, rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. But Brahms said that he was almost embarrassed to call it Ein Deutsches Requiem. He wanted to write a requiem for all humanity, a human requiem. We're not sure where his initial idea of a non-liturgical text came, but we do know his grief over the death of his dear friend and colleague, Robert Schumann, was overwhelming. And again, as he did over and over in his life, turning towards composition to find solace and peace. In the fall of 1861, Brahms laid out a four-movement cantata that he left for four years and failed to complete. And in 1865, a telegram arrived from his brother to say that their mother was dying and Brahms hurried back to Hamburg, unfortunately too late to say goodbye to his mother before she died. Three movements were performed in Vienna in December 1867 in a concert devoted to Schubert's memory, and it was met with mixed results. The Viennese found it too austere for their taste. The third movement was actually booed uh, though the fault was partly for the timpanist who played so loudly throughout the extended fugue at the end of the movement that the orchestra and the chorus were completely drowned out. The entire sixth movement received its premiere under the composer's baton in Brennan Cathedral on Good Friday in 1868. Here Brahms achieved the first great triumph in his life and for that reason, one of the sweetest moments for him. But the work was not complete. It was soon after he added the fifth movement, which became a tribute to his mother's memory, scored for soprano solo, chorus and orchestra. From its premiere in Leipzig in February 1869, the piece quickly attained the rank of a classic. It was heard in Germany 20 times within the first year and really launched Brahms on his pathway as one of the most important composers in Germany. The work is a study in classic balance and symmetry. The opening movement and the seventh movement are completely symmetrical. The second movement and the sixth movement are related in content and gesture, and three and five, leaving us with the fourth movement as the fulcrum that balances out this piece remarkably. This is hardly a requiem as we think of a normal requiem, fire, brimstone, thunderbolts. Indeed, this is all about consolation, all about peace, about resolution. In fact, even where we would expect to see a dies irae, Brahms is shouting at death and shouting at hell. Death, where is thy sting? As though taunting death itself. So it's very confusing, perhaps, for the people who initially heard this piece because it was unlike anything Brahms had written or that they had heard and unlike anything he was ever to write again. So this is very personal and very private. Brahms was one of the earliest conductors, musicians, to really be engaged with making early music and performing early music. He studied Handel, he studied Hassler, Heinrich Schütz. 
So we see in this music many traditional gestures that in fact are Baroque and you know, Renaissance in their structure. But when he does reveal himself as a romanticist, it is extraordinary. So the big moments for the public, the big fugues, the double fugues, are in themselves earlier music structures, combined with the more intense and more personal gestures of Brahms' own growing romanticism. Brahms lends a somber color to the opening uh, first movement by omitting the violins, the piccolos, clarinets, uh, and uh, one of the two pair of horns. And the chorus enter with this soft F major chord that moves up a third and then a half step on the word selig sind, blessed are they. That little nucleus of the ascending third and the half step becomes a musical cell which binds the work together in many guises over and over as the piece progresses. Seventy minutes later, the piece concludes on those same pitches, descending in the chorus on that third. Brahms was a young man when he wrote this piece. It was his first big success. His symphonies would come later, but it was in the Requiem Mass that Brahms found his own voice, his own orchestral voice, and his own timbre, and a sense of music that we know as Johannes Brahms. We think of Brahms as an old man, a grumpy man with a long beard, but in fact, this is the young Brahms starting out on his career, surrounded by love, relationships, by life. And it is in this requiem he found his sound. His orchestral sound is fully born in this Ein Deutsches Requiem. We hope you'll join us at the Mondavi Center on Sunday, March the 28th at 2 p.m., where we will have projected supertitles for a concert celebrating the life and music of Johannes Brahms.